Whoa, 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 look who's back with a new tutorial! This time, I have a tutorial on ripping sprites from CPS1, CPS2, and Neo Geo games. Now, this does not work with all games, unfortunately, because the emulator only supports certain ones. Now, um, the emulator I'm going to use for this video is Coax, or WinCoax. You can get it on the official website, um, cps2shock.emu dash france dot info this is what it looks like and you will see here on the what's new uh, release then uh, coax 1.63 that's the latest one there are other websites like uh, this one wincoax.org which you can also get the latest version and there's also another website called coax.net which you can use to um, uh, host, I believe it's hosting your um, online games so people can play. I also think you could download them here. I'm not sure. Um, let's see, is there a download button? There is, but I guess you have to register. I've, I've never actually used this site, but it's a good reference for uh, certain genres. Like you could just search up shooting games, and it'll give you like a bunch of shooting games and stuff. In this case, it just shows a bunch of Metal Slug 5 hacks. And if you download uh, WinCoax from this website, you will get uh, emulator version 1.61. Um, this is a older version, obviously. Uh, a lot of people prefer 1.58 compared to the latest one. And I have a 1.46 version, which I use. Um, so it's really what you, uh, are, what you feel like. So this is the 1.46. When I load games, you can see I have 149 games loaded. I actually have a lot more, it's not showing, but for this tutorial I'm going to use the latest one, and that is WinCoax 1.63, right here. So I'm going to go to File, I'm going to load up my game. Um, see, I'm missing a lot of games. Let's see, so, uh, I don't want to do the typical Street Fighter, I mean everyone does Street Fighter stuff, right? Why do that? Uh, the, the Alien vs. Predator, no. Armored Warriors, no. What is that? No. Dark Stalkers, Dungeons and Dragons. You know, because the Dungeons and Dragons was recently re-released on PlayStation Network and um, Xbox Live Market, whatever it's called, uh, I think I'll use this for an example. So of course you have to have your controls set, or else you can't really do what you want to do. And for a game like this, I think it'll be kind of harder to really do what you want because of the characters leveling up and learning more. So let's rip the uh, let's rip Thief. Blah, 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 story, blah, blah. Okay. So, the game's loaded. It's playing here. I'm walking around. The one thing that's amazing about Wincoax is that you can easily rip sprites with this program. So, what you do is you press enter if you want or not. You go to tools. And then you go to F shot factory. Shot Factory is a add-on application to the program that's built into it, really, and that um, allows you to take screenshots and disable layers. So let's see. First things first. We got these layers here. These are usually life bars and backgrounds. That's what this usually is. So let's see. That see took off the life bar and the other display bar. You can see already Capcom got lazy with finishing this. Uh, take off the next one, the background, and the next one, the other part of the background. And these things here, these are active objects, as in they move and stuff. So, see? With this, I can control the background, just remove the background. Now, say I want to keep a background behind here, right? I can... Uh, this is a, a bad example here, because it's all black. It's really hard when it's all black. But let's see. Maybe I think I could change it. There should be an option here to change it. Brightness. Oh, set background color. See? Set background color. Pink! Now it's all pink and she's all, I can see her. So go back to tools, go to Shot Factory. Now here you would disable the layers and you would, I prefer to have the blink selected on so I can see what I'm selecting. I would just like click and drag and select all of these things to see which is which. So these last three, her legs, so I'm going to deactivate selection. Then I'm going to go up from here and you'll see as I go, they become um, unselected. I mean they start blinking. Because I'm taking out those things. Oh, took out her leg. Need that leg. Sorry, from this end. 
her shadow, the money. Okay, so that's that. So now I'm just left with her sprite in the pink background. So at this point, I will hit the screenshot unfiltered. If you hit filtered, it's going to take a screenshot of whatever you're seeing. If you have it interpolized um, or um, blur or eagle or TV scan lines, whatever you have it on, filtered will take that screenshot. What you want is unfiltered. This is the raw data of what you're looking at. So unfiltered. Then next frame. The frame still stays the same as you can see. Then we go next frame again. Next frame. Next frame. Next frame. And she does not. Okay, she moved. So unfiltered. Next frames again. Fil unfiltered. Next frames. And she's just disappearing down pieces. So now we'll just activate pieces and deactivate pieces. Oh, it's a weapon behind her. Okay. And we'll, you know, take off this extra crap that we don't need. Okay. I don't know if I got this shot, so I'll take another shot. Okay, and she's breathing there, so we need we need her breathing. Don't need, don't need, don't need. Need. Okay. Need. That's her foot. Hand. Much needed. Uh, other part of her hand. Okay, not needed. Um, screenshot again. Next. And you just basically go over like that. And for movement and stuff, you would have to catch them like this. It's hard to catch movement. That's why you have to wait for like a cutscene in this type of game for that kind of thing. Or if you want, you can actually um, record your input and then have it play it back. And then you take screenshots from that. It works the same way. Basically, um, that's what you do. And all the screenshots are saved in the S-Shots folder. So you can load that up. Oh, sorry, not S-Shots. It's all saved in the captures folder, and if I, when I as I play through these, you will see her slightly moving as she did before. See, almost like she's breathing, which is really not. And she's perfectly aligned here, but it doesn't really matter. But see, now you have your sprites. Now the nice thing to do would be to put them in the sprite sheet if you're ripping for uh, sprite sheet purposes. Easiest way would be take one of the images, cut. Paste. Oh, paste. Take the background color, spread it all around, spread the love. And now, the easiest way to do this is to draw a line. Uh, shapes. Okay, shapes, line, size, single, color, blue. Okay, so I'm going to draw a line. It's a one pixel line, so it can't go wrong. Then take that second image, activate transparency selection. And there we go, second image, third image, oh. fourth image, and the fifth image. Now, of course, you will have a lot more sprites than what I have here, but the point is <clears throat> that you get the basic idea of how to do this. Uh, this idea here of using the line to align them, I got this from Spriter's Resource. It's actually on their guide on ripping and um, it's, a, it's a very good guide it also explains things about uh, filters and stuff like that so it's definitely worthwhile to check out on Spriter's, uh, Sprite Database um, Spriter's Resource is also a good site both of them are updated regularly and I recommend them both uh, so you can see it, this is how you make it look nice if you have like a whole bunch of sprites you just align them all by a single line at their foot bottom and then when you, if you're ready to release it or for whatever purpose, you just take off the line. And now when you display it, it looks real nice. Um, I would never personally rip from this game. It has too much animation. That's just how I feel about it. But yeah, that's all it is. It's a simple guide. Um, thanks for watching. I hope this helped a lot of guys who have asked questions about ripping sprites. Toaster, this one's for you, buddy.